Good morning. Good morning. We thank you for being here in this time of worship at Michigan Adventist Church. Uh, let us begin our time with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your grace, for your mercy, and for your love, Lord. We thank you, Father God, uh, for this beautiful day. Uh, Lord, for this time that we can gather together, Lord, to, uh, to become one people of one mind and one accord through your spirit, through your grace, and through your love. Father, as we gather today, we pray, Lord God, that you help us, Lord, set uh, down the things here at the foot of the cross, those things that bother us from last week, the, the heaviness, the pain, uh, Lord, the anguish, whatever it may be, Father God, help us to set it down and pick up your excitement, your grace, and your mercy that we can uh, embrace the, the excitement of this week to come. Help us, Father God, to uh, to be able to worship you with everything we are and everything we have. Open our eyes, Lord God, to see your vision. Open our hearts, Lord, to receive your spirit. And Father, open our lips so we can speak your love. We thank you again for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you're doing fine this wonderful morning. Uh, wanted to let everybody know uh, that uh, Next week, uh, we are going to try to begin kind of promoting our Sunday school. So we invite everybody to come and be a part of that. Uh, we will do what, what needs to be done. We have plenty of room here in the church to separate or do whatever, whatever the, the teachers in the classrooms want to do. Um, we're going to try to promote that. So if you see somebody, please let them know that uh, we're going to try to gear up for uh, next week to begin that. Are there any announce other announcements? Uh, that I have missed. Okay. Have you tried a few about cutting grass next Saturday? We're going to do a little grass cutting at the campground. Right. Everybody got it? We're debating on whether or not to have a barbecue or not. Okay. Any input on that? I see you have it. about maybe doing butts or maybe not having it at all. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. right, any others? All right, if you take your hymnal stand, if you are able. Uh, we're going to go to uh, page 370. 370. <laughs>
front of your hymnals, page 12, and we do our confession of pardon, page 12. <laughs> Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. With one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us. We were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. school so far for the praise. Y'all are here, praise God. Praise God. I'm here. I don't know, that's praise God. Any others? Turn to the back of your uh, bulletins, you'll see those names that we're praying for. Um, I wanted to let you know um, that there are some names that are italicized. If, um, if we're going to take them off, unless, unless of course, you tell us not to, right? So just look at those and let us know. I also wanted to let you know that um, I got uh, a call yesterday. Miss Wilma Ruth had an accident at her house. She fell down off the step. Um, ricocheted off the wall and then hit the floor and was laying there for a little while because Mr. Wood was outside cut grass. So the diagnosis, she went to the hospital, they sent her to the memorial to take an MRI last night. She stayed overnight. Um, she has a fractured L3. Um, and so what they're, they're not going to do um, surgery, but they are going to, you know, put a brace on her and, and hopefully it'll monitor her and, and it'll heal up. So just be in prayer for them. That's going to be a long, drawn-out process. And uh, so uh, just be in prayer and you know, word of encouragement for uh, both of them. Also, I got the, a message this morning that Mr. Wayne uh, Oxinger had to go to the hospital because he was throwing up a lot. So and that's all the information I have so far. That was uh, this morning before we came to church. Um, so be in prayer for him and and. Uh, and Ms. Dale, I think, uh, deal with that. Hopefully, you know, it's not serious. Right. Are there any, any that need to be added? Um, I don't know if, every, if everyone knows. I heard that Norma Jennings fell several weeks ago um, and broke two bones in her wrist. And she has a, a, one of those soft Velcro casts on, but it's her right hand. And she, they, they put that on there that there will be no surgery, but she's, she's at home recovering. Thank you. Any others? Okay. Let us
Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, uh, for your grace, your mercy, and your love, Lord. And we thank you, Father God, through your Son, Jesus, and the Father, Holy Spirit, Lord, that you gave us the victory. The victory in this world, Lord, a victory of life, the victory over death, the victory over uncertainty, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that we live in the victory. Sometimes we forget, Father God, to be able to uh, call on your name, Lord, and claim that victory. So, Father, as we gather here together, we pray, Lord God, that you would help us to become one people of one mind and one accord. We are claiming that victory in the name of Jesus, Lord, that is above all names. The power in the Holy Spirit, Lord God, the power of your grace and your mercy. We pray now, Father God, for every name on this list. Those that we just added. Father, those that are going through trying times at this moment, Lord. We pray for peace. We pray for strength. Lord, we pray for healing. We pray for doctors and nurses, Lord God, to be able to be there and have the knowledge and the understanding, Lord, to lead them exactly where it needs to be, to uh, help with the healing. Father, we thank you, Lord, that uh, you are there for us. You are strong, Father God, and you are leading us and guiding us. Father, in this uncertain world, we pray, Lord, <clears throat> that you be with all of us. Be with those in our community that need your help, that need your grace and your mercy, and that need your healing. Father, we pray for that. Not only a healing of body and mind of those that we have on this list, but Father, a healing of anger and resentment in our world. We pray for uh, your hand upon us all, Lord God. And we thank you uh, that you love us, that you lead us, that you guide us. You give us a safe place to come, Lord, to gather, to sing to you, Lord, to uh, give you our hearts and our hopes, Lord God, and our worries and our pains. That you may help us get through this time of trouble. We thank you again for all that you do. We pray for these people, Lord God. We, we pray also for strength to go forth, to be present, to speak a word of encouragement, a word of life in, in your name. So we thank you again for all that you do. We pray now with your son, Titus, to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right. If you would take your hymnal, stand if you are able. 454. 454.
Dear Jesus, you are that key that sets us free. That opens our eyes, opens our ears, and opens our hearts. Father, we pray as we give today that you would help us to spread that, that gift to everyone in this world. That they may see you, hear you, and know you. In Jesus' name. This, uh, this week we are going to uh, begin at uh, verse 3. So Romans chapter 12, verse 3, and I think the page is, oh, it should be on the book in there. 17, something about that. chapter 12 we're going to start at uh, verse 3 have you got it yep. all right here we go for I say through the grace given to me to every everyone who is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith for as we have many members in one body but all the members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individ individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophecy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy, mercy with cheerfulness. Amen. All right. Last week we um we began the chapter and we were talking about God's possibilities, right? And to be able to grasp God's possibilities, then we need to begin by opening ourselves, right? Sacrificing, right? And and, and of course we talked about the difference between the sacrificial what sacrificing meant or is, and what living sacrifices means or is, okay? Uh, we talked a little bit about those two words don't really kind of mix because sacrifice means death, right? Giving something up, putting down. Of course, if you want to talk about the history of sacrifice of the Israelites, they took a, a animal and they set it on the altar and they killed it for their sins. That sacrifice usually means death or giving something up. Now, putting living in the front of that, right? You're supposed to live. We are supposed to live in God and, and, and live and live, live with everything we have. So how do you live and be a living sacrifice? Meaning that every time we, we wake up in the morning, we're supposed to live for God. But we're supposed to give up those things that keeps us from being open to him, right? And that's what the first part of, of the last week what we talked about, the first part of this chapter so now, and it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the, and everybody misses this, by the renewing of your mind, okay? Right, it's, that's important. Because yes, we're not, we're not supposed to be conformed, we're supposed to be transformed, but first, we need to renew our mind. Meaning that every, every, every morning, every minute, every second, whatever, that we need to begin to transform our thinking into how God thinks. How God is leading us to think. How God is uh, ushering those thoughts into our head. And, and even when we begin to not think like God, that we need to stop, realize what we're doing, and then transform our minds, right? Not to conform to what the world tells us. Transform our minds in, into thinking how God wants to think. You know how hard that is? I have issues like every day. 
Because I want to think of how Jose wants to think, and I want to do what Jose wants to do, and I want to, you know, I want to, I want to, you know, raise the roof and throw things and stuff like that. And, and I don't want to be nice. I won't be nice anymore, right? You know. And so it's it's difficult to make that transition, uh, but it's something that God calls us to do. That we we can't think, we can't act, we can't see things, and we can't think of things the way everybody else, or the way the world wants us to. We need to see things by the way God sees things. And we need to do things how God wants to do things, and think and hear and all that kind of stuff. And so, okay, that was your synopsis of last week. But now, now uh, Paul works into, into how we're supposed to use that renewing of our mind now. Since now our mind is renewed, right? So now we're working on renewing our mind, being open to God possi uh, possibilities by being a living sacrifice. So now as living sacrifices, what do we do? We have worked on our mind and we are working on our mind and trying to get it together to, to God. So now do we, what do we do with that renewed mind? Well now we take all the things God has given us and we begin to use them, right? Um, with the gifts, that God gives you. And, he, and there's a bunch more. In the, in 1 Corinthians is a, another list that God gives um, of, of what are the gifts, are the spiritual gifts that God gives you. He, he, uh, this is not an exhaustive list. He just kind of names a couple here. And we'll touch on these. Um, but he gives in it, a gift, right? It's something that somebody gives you. Right, to use, to wear, whatever. So that's a gift. So God gifts, gifts you with certain innate abilities that you can serve him. Okay, so the first thing we need, we need to ask is, what do you think is the first thing we need to ask? The question, guys, what is the first thing you think you need to ask? This is now what I'm, my thought process. What is the gift? Not what is the gift, what is my gift? Okay, what is my gift? What is my gift? You know, and like I said, it's not an, this is not an exhaustive list, okay? He just mentions a couple. But what, what is my gift? What has what God innately given me that I can now, with a renewed mind and a transformed spirit, that I can use to further my purpose here in the world? What gift has God given me? And see, then, and this is where the difficulty is, right? Because then you get started, okay, well, what is my gift? And how do I find my gift? How do I find my gift? And that's also another thing that we need, we as individuals need to figure out. I know what works for me, and it might not work for you. You know, and this was one question. When I began, you know, before I made the decision to become a pastor, when I, when I became a Christian, and I was on fire, and I was swinging my Bible, and I was doing all these things, and I was raising the roof, and I was the first one in the church, I was the last one to leave, and I did everything I could. I was trying to figure out not only who I was in God, but what my gift was. What's my gift? What, what, what has God given me to be able to move forward in this world to do the things he does? And that's a, a question, a big question. Because if you're not working with your gift and, and the ability of the Holy Spirit, then the gears will never match. So yeah, you can be doing things, but they'll never be, it'll never be great. It can be good, it's always good, but it'll never be great until we figure out how to work with our gift and then work in the purpose of God, and then everything starts to work it right, and it just kind of, it kind of steamrolls. So we have to figure out what our gift is, and how do you do that? Now, I'm not a, I don't, you know, I don't know everything. I know what works for me. And the, the way I figured out what my gifts were is by actually doing something. You know, doing something. Um, early in my, in my pastoral uh, career, they asked me to go in, uh, for a couple of years and do a Hispanic mission out there in Metairie, Statesburg. And I figured out one thing in the whole process of four years. I am not a church starter. I am not. I don't have those abilities, don't have that, 
that stuff. I'm not, I, mean, I have charisma, but I, that's not my thing. That's not my calling. I mean, I was, it was miserable. But I figured it out. How did I figure it out? By actually doing it. We have to, we have to ask God to show us the places, the people, the things that we are called to do, and then begin to do them. Just because you say, well, you know what? I don't like speaking in front of people. That's not, you know, I have that fear. I don't want to do it. Well, maybe you need to ask for a little courage and try it one time. You know, you all know Rebecca. And she's, she actually mastered the 4 H for speaking, right? That she, you know, that's something she kind of, I guess, got it from me, I guess, I don't know. But she's really good at it. And she, you know, because she's in that little box, she never tried to stray from it. That's what she did. And we tried to push her, and we told her, you need to go, you need to get out of that. I mean, yeah, you're good at it, and that's great, but we'll try something out. So the more you ask God for it, to try to figure it out, and the more you use, you go and use it, then you figure out what your gift is. Because we, it, God has made us, you know, to be able to realize his purpose in this world. And he has given us the things that we need to do that. You have gifts. All of you have a gift. Or some of you have several gifts. And I also believe that God in his infinite wisdom, if he chooses for a single purpose at a single time, for a single moment, to give you something specific, like if I got a word and, and God said, you know, Jose, I want you to go raise, go over there and heal that person. And he will give me the ability to do that if he wants me to do it. And that's the thing that we need to think the way God thinks. And not say, you know, well, I was born this way and I will remain this way and this is, this is where I'm at. That's not the truth. And through God's grace and mercy, he can pick you up from where you're at, from where you think who you are, remove you, set you into a whole different place, and make you do something totally and utterly different than you think you can do. And age and, and education style, money, it has nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with the fact that he can pick you up from where you are and set you in a whole new different place do something for someone else. That they may hear the grace and the, and, and the uh, love of God. You know, uh, when I started, before I became a pastor, because I spoke Spanish, a lot of churches wanted me to go to, uh, to Mexico to be a translator. And one church came to me and he said, hey, we want to go. And I said, look, I would love to go. I have no money. I mean, none. I have no money. If God wants me to go, you know, he'll provide it. And if he provides the way for me to go, I'll go, I'll go. I mean, I'll make the time. Well, two days later, I said, you're going. You know, God doesn't, God works beyond our understanding. Money, time, any of that, any of that stuff that we so much worry, put so much authority into, he knocks that over. If he wants you to be somewhere, he will put you there. If, if you need something specific to do whatever he calls you to do, he will give it to you. He will give it to you. Because our purpose in this life is to let other people know what God does in this world. But if we're not open, right? If we're not open, then he can't do anything. The only person that can stop God from doing something in, in this world and in you is you. Is you with your doubts with your fears, you know, uh, all those things. You know, you say, well, I, you know, I mean, you know, because we, you know, in this world is this world, you know, I'm like, everybody believes, everybody sees themselves in a certain way. I can't do that, or I can't accomplish that, or I, that's, I'm not made for that. Well, you'll never know until you try. And if, you, and if, it, if you're not, then fine. You know, I'll tell people, look, man, you know, Stick a fork in it. Move on. I mean, you know, if, if it doesn't stick to the wall, let it go. But if, if you don't throw it on the wall, you'll never know if it'll stick. How do you know who you are unless you try it? How do, how do you know what you can do unless you try it? You know, when people say, man, that mountain, that's high, man. I don't know if I can get over there. And there's this one little guy who says, well, you know, 
what about going around it? Or hey, I got rope, man, let's climb it. We need to begin to see this world not as we see it, not as it presents itself, but as God sees it. That's a, that's the whole reason that, that God gives us the abilities that we can use to be able to climb it, go around it, move it, you know, put a stick of dynamite in and blow it up. I mean, whatever. God gives us all the gifts that we need to be able to do that. And, and the more you use these things, the more situations you put yourself to figure out maybe what you don't have, and then you figure out what you do have. I am not a teacher. I wish I was. I mean, now I can teach, you know, I can get, I can get something and we can, we can work through it, but I am not a teacher. There are those that are gifted with that, and they can teach, and they can take them, I don't know, something so outrageous and just let, you know, lead people to it. I had, I had when I was uh, taking college courses, I had a, a, I'm awful at math. I had a math teacher, and I mean, it was, I mean, she, she was wonderful, because she took it, and I mean, broke it down. I mean, to every minute that I even understood it. And um, I understood why there was letters with numbers. You know, I never understood why, 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 why somebody would put a letter with a number. And I even got through that. I mean, because of her ability to be able to break it down. And teachers are wonderful. And, and it doesn't mean that you have to stand up in, in front of the classroom, right, with a lesson plan, to be a teacher. You can teach somebody anything. You know, uh, this is a very simplistic uh, 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 example, but Rebecca one day was driving, we were driving, and the car in front of us, the lights went on, you know, the brake lights, lights went on. And she asked me, why did he do that? Not, and I didn't even realize, how did she not know that? Nobody told her. The simple things, we as Christians, those that have been and, that, and I don't mean age. I mean, those that have, have their relationship with God is, is progressing and moving, that we can, we can help others find their way through this world in God's hand. That's teaching. Yeah, we can take a book and, and help people understand the Bible, and that, that's teaching too. But, I mean, there are times in experience that we can help others find their way. That's teaching. Exhortation. You know, faith, all those things that, that, that God has given us that we can use to help others and to help our community. Something we have to understand, guys, and I, I, I try to tell you this all the time, and I hope you get this. You are not alone. Okay? You know, in this, this chapter, uh, Paul does a good job. He does it in other places, in other letters, where he tries to tell us that we are connected. We are a family. We are a unit. We are a, a body. We connect, you know, he makes a reference of one being one body, of many, of many being one body. And of course, you know, being the vine connected to God, you know, in, in, uh, in John. We are connected. The biggest thing I try to tell everybody is you are not alone. You don't have to do all this by yourself. You don't have to go and save everybody in the world. Okay? You're not supposed to do that by yourself. God has set us here as, as a congregation at Mispa, as you know, family, as, as, as United Methodists, whatever, however you want to look at it, that we are together in this. That you don't have to do it all by yourself. That whatever gift you have, there's somebody else that has a different gift, then now you can tackle the same the problem in a different way and take care of it. See, that's, that's the lie that the world wants to tell you to, to think that you are alone. You are not alone. Are not. And now with, with the technology that we have, you know, I am nothing but a click away. And if you don't have my number, that's right in the back. That's all you gotta do. If you wanna talk, if you need something, if you have an idea, if you wanna do something, whatever, hit that button. You know, we're, we're, I mean, right now, it's a couple of us in here, but we're a congregation, man. That's what we're meant to do. So don't think that you're by yourself, that, that, that this world is going to beat you up because it's not. Because God has given you gifts. He has given you 
the things you need to be able to do the purpose that we have. And what's our purpose? Remember, I was talking about a couple of weeks ago. What's our purpose? It's in the in the last chapter of Matthew. Spread the word. Spread the word. Go make disciples. Go make disciples. You know how you make a disciple? You become a disciple. So we need to become disciples of God, meaning that we need to delve ourselves into the inner workings of his word, of his example, of his, of his promises, and be able to know those and live those and interact with those that we can spread those to other people and make disciples. And that's our calling. That's our purpose. That's what, that's what God wants. And that's what all the gifts he has given you to do. So you have all kinds of stuff in your tool belt to you. Now it's up to us to learn what those are and how to use them. Because God is calling us to go forth and help others find their place in his hands also. But we are meant to do more than we're doing. And if you're doing a lot, guess what? You can do a little more. Because God is always looking for uh, the betterment of our lives and the life of others. Through our efforts, through our love, through our words, through our faith, through our gifts. And that's what we are meant to do. Amen? Amen. Okay. We are um, going to celebrate communion today. Of course, it's going to be a little different. Um... I want to also remind you if, if uh, you're willing and able to uh, donate, we do the five lanes here at the altar. So if you were uh, able to do that, uh, we appreciate it. Um, we're going to do our liturgy uh, here in a moment, but I want, I want to let you know we've got these little cups, and the way we're going to handle after we're finished, if you would walk from the outside, I mean, walk through the inside, grab your little cup. And then go back into your seat and begin to open it. And this little cup has two layers. The top layer, if you fill it up, is where the um, wafer is. And that'll probably be easier to pull up first. And then, the, and of course, the, the bottom layer is where the juice is. And um, so just to let you know that, okay? So if you follow me, page 13 in your hymnal. Great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. For all your Holy Spirit and us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world, 
until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. This is the body and the blood of Christ that redeems us sins and makes us whole. You come forward. Is everybody, is everybody able to get, get to it? Yeah. Right, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your grace and your mercy, Father. We thank you, Father, that you are with us, that you lead us, you guide us, you give us our gifts. Father God, that we may be able to uh, fulfill our purpose of making disciples. We pray for your uh, grace and your mercy, Lord God. We pray for your leadership to always open our eyes, Lord, to hear you and see you and know you. We thank you again for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're going to finish off uh, with 378. Stand if you are able, 378. We're going to sing 1, 2, and 6.
our Lord Jesus Christ. May you hear him, know your gifts, and spread his word to every corner of this earth. In Jesus' name, amen.